Eric Darling here with Darling Data, and uh, today me and Bats are here to talk to you about some rather silly optimizer stuff, and hopefully, hopefully it'll be nice and fun and enjoyable for you. I, I can't make any can't make any big promises, but we'll we'll just see how it goes, won't we? All right, so we're going to talk about subquery unnesting, <clears throat> or rather, uh, how to how to prevent it so that you too can have faster queries, right? Don't we all want faster queries? That's what we're here for. Uh, so let's eventually talk about that after we finish talking about this. All right, so if you like this channel just enough to, 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 to support it with money, uh, you, can, you can do so. You can become a, 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 a paid member of the channel you don't get anything extra from it, really. You just you just get to support my, my endeavors to talk about SQL Server stuff for free. Uh, <clears throat> of course, if, if you don't feel that it's worth money, um, perhaps perhaps you, you 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 have become so enamored with the idea of, of Postgres and everything being free that you think everything should be free. Well, you can still do other stuff. You can like, you can comment, you can subscribe, which is, I guess is about the uh, Postgres equivalent of downloading and installing and then never using. Uh, if you want to ask me questions privately that I will answer publicly, uh, you, can, you can go to this link, which is also down in the video description, and, and you, can, you can ask me a question and I'll, I'll answer it on my Office Hours episode where I answer five user questions at a time. I'm not doing that today, of course. Uh, if you would like uh, to hire me as a, as a consultant to consult on your SQL Server, uh, you can do that. Uh, I am available for all of these things and more. Health checks, performance analysis, hands-on tuning of your, your stupidest queries and whatever else, uh, dealing with uh, performance emergencies, and of course, training your developers so that uh, you, can, you can stop taking blood pressure medication and have fewer performance emergencies. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like the sin eater of performance emergencies because I, I now I take all the blood pressure medication. You can't see it over there on my desk, but it's the first thing I do every morning is wash down blood pressure medication with a double espresso. <laughs> Maybe part of the problem. If you would like to get some performance tuning training from moi, that's me, uh, you, can, you can get about 24 hours of it for about 150 US dollars and that'll last you for the rest of your life, which if you take your meds, you will have a long one or a longer one. Whether that's good or bad, I don't know. That's, that's really on you. Uh, but with uh, the link up there and the discount code right there, you get 75% off and la-di-da, you are well on your way to becoming a SQL Server performance tuning expert. Uh, if you would like to get in on the pre-sale price for my new course, Learn T-SQL with Eric, that's moi, uh, you, can, you, can, you, can, you can get it now for 250 bucks, which is half as much as it will be when all the content becomes available after the summer. That's going to be the advanced stuff. The beginner stuff is already on its way trickling into the internet. Um, uh, this is, of course, companion material to the uh, T-SQL pre-cons that Kendra Little and I will be doing in, what's it called? Seattle? It's a weird name. Uh, we're in Seattle at Past Data Community Summit in November. And speaking of which, boy, we have a lot of stuff to talk about, don't we? Oh, boy. I'm going to be going to be traveling a lot. Delta's going to be seeing a lot of this guy. Seeing a lot of moi. Uh, yeah, I will, I will be, well, I mean, New York City isn't really much of a flight for me. But Dallas and Amsterdam, those, those, are, those are some travel predicaments. And uh, Seattle... That that is that is as well. Uh, I guess I, I guess I'm really only getting off easy on one of those. Uh, but uh, August 18th to 20th, New York City, Dallas, uh, Dallas, September 15th to 17th, and Amsterdam, October 1st to 3rd, and then of course Seattle, November 17th to 21st. Uh, I'll be I'll be there doing stuff at every single one. So anyway, with that out of the way, let's let's get on with the show here, All right? Let's 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 do some stuff. And let's uh, so I, I let's start at the top a little bit. I, I scroll down a little just to just to do something, but whatever. I created this index. This index is on the post table. It's on owner user ID and last activity date. Uh, now I have this query, and we're going to call this query our Halloween problem. 
but it's our Halloween problem from 2009, but she doesn't make that much of a difference in the grand scheme of things, but uh, you'll see, right? That's the whole point. You'll watch and you'll see and you'll learn, and, 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 and when, when you're done, you'll be a little bit better than you were before. All right. So uh, we have a, a subquery, and, and that's that, this is a correlated subquery, right? Because we, we only care about where uh, the owner user ID in the post table is equal to the user ID in the users table up here, right? So this is a correlated subquery. But the idea is that we want to find each user's max last activity date, right? Where the, where the re reputation is over 1,000, and only where that, that last activity date is less than or equal to Halloween of 2009. <clears throat> now, you might have all sorts of ideas in your head about how SQL Server might choose to run this query, and they all, and they all might be very good ideas. SQL Server has an idea, but it's not a very good idea between you and me. This is, this is one of my least favorite plan shapes to see when I have a correlated subquery. Uh, now, it returns fast enough for this, right? Because I, I, I don't want to spend a long time waiting for a query to finish. But the shape of the query plan is, is, is rather unfortunate. Uh, we have this whole index scan of posts, right? 17 million rows. We aggregate uh, stuff there once. We aggregate stuff there again. And then we filter stuff, right? And of course, this filter is going to be uh, on... Oh, I'm sorry, that's the sort. <laughs> this filter is going to be where expression 1002 <clears throat> is... That's the, the, the expression here is the max, right? So SQL Server does um, over here... It does a, a group by owner user ID and it partially aggregates some of the rows. And then uh, this thing is where it fully aggregates all of the rows. And then this filter is, of course, where the, 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 this generates the full max for the result set. right? And then uh, this filter filters out rows that do not qualify for the max. And then we do a nested loops join to the users table here, and we find about 90 rows that qualify. And the index seek here is, of course, uh, on the ID column, right? Because that's what, that's, that's what the correlation in our subquery was. And we have a residual predicate to get rid of rows where the reputation is less than 1,000. But I hate this, right? This is what we don't want to see, is this whole thing happen over here. This is usually a bad sign. It's not always a bad sign, but, it, but it, it's a sign to me usually, like if I'm running a query, and, uh, and, and, and like I see this shape to it and this part is very, very slow, then, then, I, I, think, then I think to myself, we're, we're going to need to do something about this. Now, one way that you can prevent SQL Server from unnesting queries is to add in a top, right? And since there is no group by here, right? There is no grouping element to this. It is a scalar uh, uh, aggregate, right? We are selecting one max, even though it's sort of like implied that uh, it's partitioned, like it's, it's almost like a partition by owner user ID, we still only uh, return a scalar aggregate per owner user ID. All right. So if we add a top one in here, then SQL Server chooses I th what I think is a better query plan shape for this sort of thing all around, right? And rather than do that whole uh, like group by blah blah filter thing, uh, we go and this, you'll, you'll notice that this is much faster as well. One thing, one thing I forgot to do up here. We're going to backtrack just a little bit so I can show you the the query time on this. Is this took seven hundred milliseconds, right? Not the end of the world by any stretch of the imagination, but imagine this in a much bigger situation, right? That's that's what we always have to do is imagine that something much much worse is happening sometimes, right? And now we run this. Again, and this thing takes about a hundred milliseconds, and now things look a little bit different. So we use the users table as the driving force here, and we do a again we use nested loops. But then for every user ID that comes out of the nested loops join, because this is what we refer to as apply nested loops, because we have this outer reference in the nested loops. For every user ID, every unique user ID that comes out of here, we come in here and we, well, gosh almighty, we have two tops, all right? That, that, that might be good news for some of you, but it's not necessarily great news for me. All right, that's, it's, a, it's a bit much in here, don't you think? 
Like why, why do all this? So uh, an, an easier way to express this, this as a subquery that's still correlated is uh, to use a, still use top one and still have it be correlated, but rather than have a, a scalar aggregate come out here, what we're gonna do is uh, select the top one last activity date ordered by last activity date descending, which is the equivalent of getting a max last activity date. So if we run this, we will have a slightly tidier uh, inner side of the nested loops, right? We only have the one top now, and we don't need to do that aggregate for each trip in, because we're just getting the top one very, very easily each time. And this takes about 20 milliseconds less or fewer, depending on, depending on what you're into there. You might, I don't know. Doesn't matter to me. But anyway, uh, this is a slightly tidier query plan, and this, this, this is usually the plan shape that I wanna see when I'm writing queries like this. Now, where, where top one uh, becomes somewhat more, well, actually not somewhat, but where top one becomes, can become quite a bit more useful than, uh, than, a, than a scalar aggregate like this is when the row, or rather the column that you want to uh, compare is different from the column that you want to order by. Now, there are all situations that might call for this, right? Like uh, if you have, uh, if like if you're doing something with like a like ordering system, you might want to find the most recent order ID ordered by last activity date descending. Uh, if for any reason um, order IDs were maybe are like randomly assigned and not sequentially assigned, that might be a sensible way of doing things. Um, if you wanted to find, I don't know, like. I don't even know what another good example is. <laughs> Sorry, not, can't think of another great one off the top of my head. But just like whenever the the thing that you want to compare is detached from the thing that, from the ordering element, then top one becomes much more useful because you can't really do this with just like with aggregates, right? It's, it's like oh well, I want the max of this, but only when it's with the max of that, the, the query becomes all sorts of weird. But uh, what I what what I want to leave you with here is a little bit of a query riddle. Now, for all of the queries that I've, I've run, we have gotten 90 rows back, right? You can, you can see this in the query plan where we got 90 rows there, and you can see this in the results where there are 90 rows down here, right? This is the very end of the results. We have no more results after mixed solution, right? <laughs> Nothing in there. Uh, but something, and, and now this is, this is where uh, things get sort of like funny and tricky and interesting when, when we're writing T SQL queries is, is uh, you, you might get the idea in your head at some point to say, well, you know, why? Sorry, uh, it's not framed up terribly well to ask that question, right? The, the, the framing quality did not match the voice quality. So you might say, why? why? Why are we only comparing this out here? We have an index on owner user ID and last activity date. Why wouldn't we just do some additional filtering in here to ask where the top one last activity date is like already pre-filtered here. So then we can, we can just like, this'll just be like residual filtering. Like why not put this up here too? So we can double seek to just stuff that we care about, All right? And this is, this is where things get kind of fun, All right? So here's our original query and here's our query where, where we think that we're going to be very clever and filter things out early. All right, so let's, let's run these two together. The first one, well, they both finish very quickly, right? The, the speed is not the issue here, but this, like, well, if, but when we look at the results that get returned, they are much different. Our, our, our first query gets 90 rows, and our second query gets 24,302 rows. Well, that, that's, that's certainly interesting. You know, we, we, we still did a seek here, didn't we? All right, well, yes, we did. We just, we just didn't get down low enough. We still do a seek here, right? right? That's our first query. And we, and we do a seek here, but our seek here is to owner user ID and last activity date. Well, gosh, that's interesting. We got, we got our double seek, but we got way more rows back, right? If we come over here and look, we, we can verify this column has 24,302, this, rather, this result has 24,302 rows in it. So the, the little riddle that I'm going to leave you with, and 
you can you can if you're feeling bold and brave and you you think you know why well you can you can leave a comment that, that attempts to express your thoughts and feelings on this issue on the video right cuz that is that is sort of a funny little tricky thing isn't it why does adding an additional filter return more rows fascinating fascinating stuff anyway thank you for watching i hope you learned something i hope you'll think about this and i hope that you will leave a, a, a suitably cromulent comment about your thoughts on why that produces more rows by adding it by adding an additional filter produces more rows than not anyway Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something, and I'll see you in the next video. I don't know what that'll be about yet. So we'll, we'll both be surprised. Just you and the one other person watching at this point. All right. Cool. Thank you. Goodbye.